Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the pot at the palace. A whoo, music's going a little crazy there. Um, a live reaction here because we just got some some very interesting news, and we felt like uh, we said if big things happen that we were going to go live. Um, and it turns out that's the case here. Devo Davis, four year senior, um, Razorback. I, I don't know, legend. Yeah. Did we go there? Certainly a March legend. He's entered the transfer portal. Um, wow. And so we're here to react about it. Um, I do have his post pulled up here. Uh, it says, through years of practice and hard work, my goal was always to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks. It was a dream come true to wear a Razorback jersey and represent my home state. I want to thank the Razorback fans, teammates, and coaches for their support. I'm grateful for the amazing sponsors that gave me opportunities to partner with their brands. From game-clinching dunks to hitting game-winning shots in March, the memories will live with me forever. With much thought and prayer, I've decided to enter the transfer portal and explore pro opportunities. No matter where this journey takes me, Arkansas will always be home to my family and me. All right. So there's that. Um, Scotty, I'm curious what your initial reaction is to this because I think we probably anticipated that this, you know, like, Devo had played his last game as a Razorback, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't I didn't necessarily think he was gonna play anywhere else in college. <laughs> and maybe he won't yeah, based he on might that not. post, but we'll see. Um I'm not totally surprised. I just I thought, you know, when I talked to him in the locker room after the South Carolina game, right, what he told me sounded very much like he was not, like you said, gonna play at Arkansas again. Um but he does have a year left. And so, you know, there's that possibility. He could, you know, maybe go back closer to home. Um, you know, a Little Rock type fit comes to mind. I don't know if that is a fit, but it's a, you know, it's a it's a potential opportunity for him there. And I'm sure that Little Rock has already <laughs> probably already contacted him. Uh, but I my my initial reaction, like from when. Um, you know, when I was talking to him, I thought he was just going to go pro. And because he was like, I've got to go, got to start, I'm going to start looking out for me more. And to me, that indicated, you know, pro ball and, you know, trying to go get, get a bag playing pro. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and obviously he uh, tested the waters for the NBA draft last year. Um, I know he had a couple workouts. And yeah, I know he had one with the Bucks. Yeah, ultimately decided to come back to school. Um, so he's aware of all that. Now he didn't have near the season, you know, this past year that, that he did his junior year. Um, and so you wonder how that impacts things. So, it, you know, I'm sure he'll put the paperwork in again and, and go through that process again. And, yeah. you know, obviously look at overseas options and everything like that, uh, from a college standpoint, like you mentioned, you know, maybe a, a hometown flair there. I wonder what the, uh, what the interest will look like for him, like what the transfer market will look like for a guy like Devo, uh, the NIL market, what it would look like for a guy like Devo. Because yeah. again, like this was, it was a disappointing season all around for Arkansas basketball um, and Devo from an individual standpoint, just in terms of production and everything like that. Yeah. Like going into the South Carolina game, it was career low in points. I think field goal attempts per game and field goal percentage. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a, a dude who's a four year guard, um, who's had just some incredible moments, uh, has been proven at the SEC level, has a reputation as a as a lockdown defender, even though we didn't always see that at times this year. Yeah. Um, I I wonder what type of of high major interest is going to be out there and, and who tries to get involved. Like I remember even last year when he was testing the waters, uh, that I I remember one time period where I was getting just a bunch of texts about uh Indiana. Like, oh, if he hits the portal, Indiana is going to be all over. Like, I wonder if something like that would even, you know, materialize um, at this point. I don't know. I don't know yeah, what the market's going to look like. I, yeah, I don't either. And mm -hmm. I think, is it, I don't know, this was years and years and years ago, but like who was, who was in on him when he was coming out of high school? Was it like, he was he, Oklahoma State Yeah, commitment? he was Oklahoma State commit. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And now obviously – that coaching situation is, has changed over yeah. there. Um, but I'm, I, I'd have to go back and look at it. I'm sure he had a bunch of sec schools on him and, and big 12 regional guys. So, uh, it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see. I mean, and, and you also think about maybe, uh, you know, teams who are primed or, or thinking they're going to be able to make a run next year and, and you're looking for kind of a missing piece or, or the glue, 
uh, man, and just a guy who's got that kind of experience, I mean, could, yeah. there could definitely be some appeal. Yeah, for sure. And I'm wondering if there, there will be SEC experience or SEC interest in him. Um, you know, coaches have been, some coaches have been planning for him and prepping for him, you know, all four years that he's been here, I guess, you know, his freshman year after he broke out, they started prepping for him heavier. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's got the the postseason experience that you that you really look for in a guy, right? Um, and he's, you know, he's been a guy that's, you know, in big moments has not been afraid of, of the big moment, whether it's, I mean, offensively and defensively, like people love to talk about the Mac McClung deal, mm -hmm. you know, when he was a freshman. Um, maybe just, uh, maybe potentially a change of scenery in college is, is maybe what he needs to, um, maybe feel more himself. And I just hope whatever he does, what, whatever he does, wherever he lands, I just hope that he can, you know, find peace and enjoy and get back to, to being who he was, you know, who we got to know as a freshman. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah, I, I keep thinking back to last week in Nashville and I know you touched on it a little bit, um, but just kind of how surreal it felt in that in that locker room after both games, like even after they won against Vanderbilt, and we've talked about it, like it was it was Wednesday sadness, like how excited could you be? Uh, but it just it didn't it didn't feel quite right in yeah. there. And then I just remember how, and hey, like you're just doing your job, man. <laughs> but I just like how awkward it felt in that just dead silent locker room at when things ended on Thursday. Um, you know, when you were, when you were talking to Devo and interviewing him for that, for that story that you got. And I, I think one of the key words in the title of your story was candid. And he was very much that. Um, and I, and I thought that was telling and, and yeah, we even he, did, talked, he didn't care who heard. Mm -mm, no, not at all. And I think, you know, that, that was probably a pretty good indicator that, you know, his, his time at, at Arkansas was probably coming to an end, but we even talked about it maybe even yesterday on the pod, like, I just couldn't envision a world where uh, he would be super interested in coming back to Arkansas for a fifth year with a brand new roster for yeah. the fifth season. Yeah, you know, and we it, talked this about, one was hard on. We him. talked about that a lot when he had his, you know, second leave of absence and his many seasons this year. Um, I brought up, you know, he's think about. I hadn't done the research, but just think about the number of different teammates that he'd played with. I mean, and that's a lot of personality, a lot of ego, um, just a lot of people that you've got to try to get to know in a in a relatively short amount of time, and then you do it again. And yeah. you get to know a new crop of guys, and you do it again. Like, that's just – that's probably really mentally taxing, and it's kind of left him, I guess, for the most part, the last few years just kind of not knowing where he fit in. And like, just like you go to a party and you don't really know a whole lot of people. You try to get to know some people, but you don't really know them like that. And sure. you get to spend a lot of time with them. Um, it's can be hard, man. And probably awkward a little bit too. So, um, you know, if he goes the college route, he's going to have to do it again. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Without the familiarity of at least goes the pro, staff and going to have to do it again. Surroundings, yeah. No, that's, that's actually a really good point. I didn't think about it from that angle of things. Um, man, like, like I've I've really enjoyed covering Devo um, over the course of the last four Likewise. years. I understand, um, you know, on like on one hand, you have just all the amazing moments that he's uh, that he's generated. And you love seeing that just from a from a guy who's representing his home state, just like he said in his you know in his post there. Um, but on, on the other side of the coin, like he's a very polarizing guy, you know, and had some ups and downs and a couple leaves of that, of absence mixed in there. Um, it, it's a complicated legacy, but I, I think the overwhelming majority stance will be that he's going to be very revered in the state. I wonder how that's impacted it, depending yeah, by, on where he winds up. Uh, and yeah, you and know? I think it's impacted. I don't want by, it to be, but I think people it's gonna be impact people just by seeing that he's entered the portal. Yeah. Instead of just going going pro. Right. Um, he, he's got got options there, but it's um yeah, it was a it was a wild up and down four years. Like the highs like two days ago, March eighteenth, was the one year of his game against <clears throat> Kansas. Yeah. One year and two days later, checking on his pro options and he's in the portal. I just it's like, I could have, wow. Yeah. Could have never, could have seen the pro thing coming, especially after that Kansas game, but definitely not the, 
Definitely not the the portal, but I think that's a good indication of just how chaotic, maybe that. If I don't know if that's the right word, but <laughs> based on the way Arkansas season went, it was it was it felt chaotic. Just a, it's an indication of how weird this this last season was. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and for anybody who's listening live, uh, feel free to hop in the in the chat if you have you know questions or comments. Obviously, we're we're talking about Devo right now. We're going to get into some other things here shortly. Uh, but we definitely wanted to hop on here and, and react and see how everybody's feeling. Um, yeah, like like I said, like I, I'm, I have mixed emotions on it just because I really had no anticipation that he'd be back with the Razorbacks next year. The, right. But the thought that he might go play someone else somewhere else just it feels weird. Yeah, it doesn't to me. feel right for sure. Um, and I want him to do what's best for him. Mm-hmm. I want to make that clear. But I'd much rather him, you know, sign a pro contract with somebody than sign an <laughs> NIL deal with. Uh, <laughs> you know, with an SEC school. For sure. Yeah, something. for sure. So, uh, man, yeah, just, uh, just a wild deal. Uh, and, and what it does do, you know, if you're just looking at the business side of things, uh, is, you know, Arkansas now has another open scholarship that's six. Uh, but if you kind of think about, I don't know, just going back to just the trajectory of, or, or patterns of the past and how things usually work, um, typically when Arkansas gets stung with something around portal season. And a lot of times it's guys who declare for the draft or whatever. Uh, was that the case with AB last year? Mm-hmm. I think he, he officially, or he went on like the jump or something and announced he was going into the draft. And then it felt like right after that, they, somebody popped something pops. in the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it's been my understanding that, I think that the staff is motivated to uh, make a splash <clears throat> in the portal pretty quick. Now, just to to get the ball rolling on the off season, because like like we said a hundred times, like they're going to have a bunch of dudes to add here, um, and so you know we'll see we'll see what happens. It's uh, it's tricky navigating these portal waters right now because, um, dude, some some of these. Some of these kids don't understand their worth, <laughs> I guess, uh, from an NIL standpoint. I know the asking prices on some guys have been just insane. Uh, and if you're really trying to take your time and and evaluate, you know, who's the right fit and how it's going to work, and even, you know, considering how much money you have to work with from an NIL standpoint, like if we designate this much to one guy, do we have enough for this guy? Like there's a lot of things that go into it, but you can also miss out pretty quick because I think we saw it with the Jacob Cruz kid from UT Martin yesterday right? where um, he was a guy that Arkansas was in on early and they were interested, obviously like the way he could stretch the floor, still going through the evaluation process with him on, on how he fits and what that could look like. And then boom, he, you know, gets a bag and he's off to Mizzou, which Mizzou, by the way, I know they haven't won a game this calendar year, but they're, they're shaping up to have a, a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice portal hall if things all go according to uh, to their plan there. So Dennis Gates had to get busy, busy in the portal to, uh, <laughs> yeah, he did to make up for not winning a game <laughs> yeah. since around. Christmas I mean, he had time. to do something to justify keeping his job, right? I mean, right. You, you lose twenty games in a row or whatever it was. It's like, dang, you better uh, you better make a quick splash there. There's that Kim Pom page again, that farmer's tan. They're still dealing with it, um, and so I guess my thought here is. You know, we, we've heard a, a lot over the past few years, like Muss, Arkansas basketball, uh, they can be just a little bit too antsy in the uh, in the transfer portal and, you know, kind of use all their bullets early. And then you get to, you know, a little bit later in the portal season where, you know, bigger and bigger names start coming out. And it's like, oh, well, dang, they don't have a spot or boy, they probably already used up all their their NIL or whatever. Uh, and so there's a, a thought process out there, and I even put a poll out that was like, how quick do you think Arkansas is going to strike in the portal? I did it on Monday, and I was like, today, you know, before the weekend, you know, next week, or, or patience. And patience won. It was like 40-some-odd yeah. percent. Because people were like, because you don't... People want to make miss- sure... Yeah, people want to make sure that this yeah. this, this staff is, is getting it but right this time. they need some momentum. Right. Because they're in a different than they have been in years past. Um, they're not in the tournament. They're coming off of a losing season. Uh, you have some negative recruiting going on. You have an entire roster to rebuild. Like you, you, you got to start making some moves. So I ask you, like, is is patience 
actually a virtue in this off season for Arkansas because I get it from people who are like, you know, wait it out, make sure you're making the right decisions, but you got a lot of decisions to make, man. You do, and it. I think, I think you made a good point with like you just need to start generating some momentum. Yeah, because right now, or before, about twenty minutes ago, it was just crickets in terms of you know guys who as of right now or as of then were you know still had decisions to make or yeah. whatever it's just radio silence there um and then nothing's popped in the portal yet so it's mm -hmm. just kind of where you were late last week when the season ended um minus a few guys hopping in the portal over the weekend or you know stating their intentions to but yeah right. i mean i i agree i think would you when when's the earliest or the latest that you would feel good about maybe arkansas landing somebody and starting to pick up steam you know in terms of a, a portal kid what's today wednesday yeah if i was them i'd, I'd be trying to do it by the end of the week yeah. or this weekend yeah i get in one and that's enough time yeah, I think to to really evaluate somebody, check all the boxes, so do I mean, the by, background checks. By, by Friday, you know. your season's over for a week, right? And we like you you said that you know that staff's been in the been in the you know in the facility since last Friday, so a mm -hmm. week. You know, looking into guys, talking to kids, and um, I think you can you can bet kids in a week. Yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, no um, doubt. and and you don't want to be because here's the thing, like like we were saying earlier. Typically, when Arkansas gets stung by a guy leaving, whether it's through the draft, the portal, whatever, um, they they strike pretty quick, you kind of soothe the blow and and get some excitement going, generate some momentum. Uh, and so it wouldn't surprise me at all if, if something popped, you know, here in the next couple of days. Uh, but what you got to do is you got to be careful about being too reactionary sure. and just being like, damn, like we got to we got to change the momentum here. Uh, screw it. Like, it's let's up the up the bag for so and so. Yeah. Right. And then you kind of put yourself in a tough position moving forward. So it's it's a delicate balance there. Um, you know, and I I even I sent out a tweet about it, you know, last night, just some of the crazy numbers I've been hearing for, you know, like asking prices for guys from NIL. Uh, and it's just it's such a, a weird balance with risk and reward. And it's like you you don't always get what you pay for, but you never get what you don't pay for. Exactly. Like so like it, it's there, it comes with risk no matter what. And, you know, the way I'm looking at it now, just from an SEC standpoint, is Missouri went over in the league. When they got out there and, and within, you know, 48 hours of the portal being open, they snagged a top five guy. Yeah. And it's 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 kind of a statement thing of, hey, like, we're not letting this happen again. Yeah. Like, we're, we're it's serious it's over here. Setting the tone for their offseason, for sure. But if if any of the, uh, the accounts that I've heard on how much NIL that dude's getting... Uh, is accurate they probably overpaid so i get it uh, <laughs> yeah. but whatever uh, but at the same time like nate oats in alabama they're a four seed in the ncaa tournament they're getting ready to play a tournament game didn't stop them yeah they got from a kid getting from a baller Pepperdine. yeah they got the kid from pepperdine millet milletti whatever yeah, his Houston, name Miletti. is uh so teams are already starting to make moves uh and chances are well i know for a fact like neither one of those teams are going to have as many moves to make as Arkansas is right because Missouri's got like a six man freshman class coming in. They've got some guys returning uh, Bama too. They got, they got some dudes who are going to be able to come back. Uh, this is a full roster flip from Arkansas. So you like, you got to start getting some dudes and I know they've got some obstacles to overcome in terms of, you know, um, it, it's just, a, it's just a different program to sell right now than it has been over the last two or three years. So There's no doubt. Um, that's something they have to work on, but I, I think they got to, Maybe you, you can still, I think you can still add a couple guys here, a couple people, you know, a couple pieces that could help you early in portal season mm -hmm. while still practicing patience. You see my air quotes there yeah. um, and leaving yourself some wiggle room as things continue to progress. Cause I, I see a couple qu uh, comments yeah. in here. Like Jonathan says, uh, do you think he's waiting on tournament players? Well, yeah. I mean that that's part of it. Right. Um, but I also think you have to strike while, you know, 68 teams are still playing while basketball. While their attention is divided. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like the 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 pool of available players and the overall talent, it's going to increase significantly, you know, yeah. as those tournament teams start to lose and, you know, names start to pop up in the portal. 
then yeah, absolutely. But like if you know if you got six open scholarships right now, um, I can go ahead and guarantee you that you're going to have more than that, at least two more than that that you're going to have to work with. Um, you could take a couple guys now and still have six to work with for the rest of the the spring and summer. <laughs> right. So it's not like they would be uh, putting themselves in a bad spot there for sure. Also, there's a question, Red Raptor. Did you say Devo is going to Missouri? That was not. No. No, did not say no. that. No, 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 did not say that. What do you think about this one? Do you think Devo leaving is any foreshadowing of what may happen at the coaching position? My initial reaction was no. Mm -hmm. um, I think Devo's just. I think Devo. From what I took from when I talked to him in the locker room, he just fresh start. Yeah, was just, and I think it was a, it was an individual decision. Like he said, like in the bottom of the story that I wrote, like he's going to start looking out for him and looking right. out for him is looking for, you know, a, a better situation. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's professionally or, you know, what he deems is a better, better fit, better position, better situation at another school. For sure. Yeah. I don't think I, it was coach driven. I don't think so either. No, I, I really don't. Um, especially after everything that those guys have, have gone through together. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was that now does the, um, what, what may happen at the coaching position is, is that factoring into some other things with the portal? Um, probably, probably so. And a lot of it's just rumor, you know, that, that's that, you know, just unverified or speculation or people connecting dots. But, um, the longer you go without, I don't know, um, a, a, a contract extension or, I don't know, like tweet out a picture of a hog or I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, as long tweet as tweet out the gif of like you did yesterday yes. with Eric laying in the floor and then wrapping yes. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could you imagine if he tweeted that out? It, like people would go nuts for sure. Like they would forget about everything they've been pissed off about for the last, <laughs> you know, <laughs> however long for sure. And, uh, and, and they'd be all over and excited again. But until you, until you have something like that, the speculation is going to continue. And, um, frankly, like if, if, if some of these, you know, jobs that, that must has been connected to or involved with, or people, you know, think he is whatever, uh, the longer they stay open and the more dominoes shift around or other guys tell them no, like whatever, like the longer those things drag on, the more nervous you get Sure. about it. You know, like, like Louisville, for example, like if Scott Drew tells them no, and then, you know, Dusty May chooses to go to Michigan and, you know, like whatever, then like if, if that pecking order starts to change, then you, you keep looking at it and you kind of raise an eyebrow and go, uh Oh yeah. Right. And that's why, you know, I, I like seeing, you know, Nate Oates signed to an extension, like right away when that Michigan job came up, because people right away were like, oh, that could be a good spot for him, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, they locked him up right away. And then you start to hear a lot of rumors about, you know, Chris Beard, could he be on the move? Is he in play at Louisville or wherever else? Nope, lock him up, extension. And I get it, like there's a lot of factors that go into that in terms of, uh, you know, money and, you know, the, the length of the contract, you know, in the years and buyout and like, there's a lot that goes into it, man. Um, and so maybe that's not even the answer so much as, I don't know, just some, some sort of confirmation and you shouldn't have to do that. Like you're under contract or whatever, but it might help change some perception or ease some minds or whatever. Yeah. If that's even what they want to do. And generate some optimism yeah. perhaps with the, with the fan base. Cause they're, I mean, they're just uneasy at the moment. Um, you know, with the with the rumors are being what they are, and then coming off an under five hundred season, your first since oh nine ten. Like, I feel like Arkansas's fan base's love language is words of affirmation. They just yes. need they, they just need that. <laughs> yeah. They just need some kind of uh, some kind of word that'll just you know, um, you know, maybe fill that fill that optimism a little bit. For sure. No, I I agree with that a hundred percent. And so uh, with with the Devo news, that's now four guys who've entered the portal off of last year's roster. And so we are waiting on uh Layden Blocker, Bayfall, Caleb Battle, Tremont Mark, Trevin Brazil. Yes. Is that Yep, that's the five. That's who we're waiting on here. Okay. Um so we'll see what happens with, with all those. Apparently Caleb Battle went on radio and said that he's focused on getting kind of like NBA feedback, but then he hasn't ruled out a return to Arkansas. So that maybe that's the 
latest update from there. Yeah. I'll keep hopping on his IG lives whenever. Yeah. Well, hey, as long as he doesn't, uh, as long as he doesn't enter the portal too, then um, I consider that a, a positive sign. Sure. So uh, I don't. I don't think I could fault. Couldn't fault him at all if he wanted to. You know, start the pro career or at least explore his options. So we'll see what happens, man. Um, I'm gonna roll through a couple of these other comments here before we move on to some other stuff, some some portal stuff. Um. Until Derek says this program is bleeped. I don't know about all that, but it, but like when you get to a moment like this and like you're you're losing guys and you know dudes who have contributed to the program for so long and you haven't added anybody yet, it's like ah, I, I get it. Understand it's an, where you're it's an uneasy, from there, yeah. uneasy feeling. Um, Paul Woodhouse here says Devo has had highs, high highs and low lows at Arkansas. Maybe a new start would benefit him. That's yeah, kinda, that's kind of what I alluded to yeah. earlier. Um, and when we did like the senior shout outs and we found out that Devo was going through the the senior night stuff. Right. Um I completely lost my train of thought. But yeah, like we knew that he had a, a year of eligibility and just I mean, I keep going back to what he just kept telling me, man. It just sounded like he just was I don't know if well, he was so candid, it felt like he was just fed up. Yeah. So um yeah. Right. Um, let's see here. Austin Finch says Devo deserves to get more minutes elsewhere. I mean, he got, I don't know if he could get more minutes elsewhere. <laughs> Dude, he played a lot. He played, yeah, 27.4 minutes yeah. per game this and year. And that's probably his lowest over the last couple of years, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Second, uh, second lowest of his career. Yeah. Actually. Cynix says, uh, I wonder if he wants to get away from Arkansas or state and in state school. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he'll want to do there. I think there could be something cool about, you know, him maybe go, like going to a place like Little Rock with Daryl Walker and they've mm-hmm. got some Arkansas guys. Like, that would be cool. Um, I think he could, if he if he wanted to, I think the options would be there for him to play at a higher level than that. Yeah. But I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I mean, he's, he's seen Mikel Mitchell and now K.K. Robinson, two of his former teammates, go down there and they're, you know, all OVC guys and, um, yeah, had pretty good success and they were pretty close to getting to the tournament. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jake Walker says, "Happy for David. Uh, happy for Davis. New school. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's definitely going to be a bittersweet thing for uh, for a lot of people." Um, Del Derek says, "Will we ever get a solidified big man, Curtis? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's here's the thing about that. Arkansas has a lot to sell in the front court because they don't have one." Um, like they're going to have to add like three, four boards to the lineup. And so you can, you can go to these guys and say, Hey, path is clear, man. Like there's, there's nobody here to compete with, uh, you know, especially at the center position, like the minutes are there, you know, like you could even, I I know Arkansas doesn't really do this, but some schools do like, you could say like, Hey, you got a starting spot here, you know, in the sec, if you come here, it's like, there's a lot to sell from that standpoint, definitely, but Big men come at such a premium, quality big men, like SEC yeah. caliber big men. They come at such a premium. Um, and so it's two things. Like the competition for them is crazy, uh, and the inflation rate in terms of expectations for NIL is nuts. And so like I was reading, I actually went back and read some of that that On3 article that you referenced yesterday about NIL and everything and how like you got to have a minimum – of a million dollars to build a starting lineup. And that's not even talking about your bench and everything else. Right. Uh, but if you're going to do that with a legit big man, that's going to take up more than half of that yeah. million dollars it right might there. Be, like, yeah. just, like if you want like a bona fide, legitimate or solidified, like, like, uh, like Dale saying, like you might need that for a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like your, your premier cornerstone, build your roster around that guy. You're going to need to fork over a truckload. Right. And so, like, they need well, one of the Loomis trucks to, to visit the kid's house. Will Arkansas get a big man? Um, yeah, absolutely. 1000% guarantee you that they're going to get at least a couple of them. In fact, there's there's one in particular that I think they're they're closing in on, you know, maybe down to, to one or two schools there uh, that we've discussed very recently um, on the pot at the palace. But, um, it, yeah, like, you're going to need more. And if you're going to get, you know, like, let's think about, uh, like the Maxime Raynog kid that just hit the portal from Stanford, seven one two fifty, all pack twelve. He's nice, double double average kind of guy. Like that dude, he comes at a price. Yeah, he's gonna cost okay. you for sure. Like that's uh, 
that that would cost you a lot. And then you have to determine like, where do you, I think, where do you value things positionally? Like how much, how much value does Arkansas put into a big man versus a star wing yeah. or a table setter at point guard? Yeah, Cause you gotta, general. you gotta figure yeah. out how to distribute that. Sure. It's a, it's a balancing act. And honestly, that's part of what I really enjoy about having Eric Musselman because these are things he's had to figure out his entire career. Cause that's what you do at the NBA. It's all about money, yeah. finances, contracts, what you can afford, what you can't, mm -hmm. uh, and piecing things together from that standpoint. And a lot of times it's GMs that do that, but hell, he was a, he was like, he was the Jackie moon of the CBA <laughs> you know, for a while there when it was, uh, like he was making the trades and, and pulling the strings and coaching the team and all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. he's, he's equipped to handle it. Um, does he have, you know, the, the NIL that he needs, I, that's currently up for debate, but uh, they've, they've certainly got enough to put together a good team. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. There's a question, or I guess maybe kind of a statement from Cody, develop Bay Fall. He has crazy talent. And if you hit the offseason with him hard, I think he could be a difference maker early, similar to a Jalen Williams type. I don't necessarily see that with with Bay. Like they're, him and Jay Will are just two different Two different types. Maybe maybe he's talking about impact only, but I don't. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't particularly see that. Yeah, either. I think Bay is pro he may have more raw talent, like just that athleticism and the length and some of those things that you can't teach. Yeah. Um, but Jalen Williams was more physically ready, just from a like a weight and strength standpoint uh, when he came into college and. Uh, he was also a um, pretty basketball savvy guy. Yes. And the, the game is still relatively new to Bay, which means he has a super high ceiling. Yeah. Um, but, but whether he stays or not, and that we'll see, okay, what, what happens with all that. Uh, but I, I don't know that that's a guy you can, you know, really bank on next year even. I mean, yeah. he showed flashes. Like, I, I know we really enjoyed that little spurt he had at, at you know, against North Carolina it in the Bahamas. It was just a spurt, but yeah, it was, it was just fun. a spurt. And what he got into an SEC game at some point and had a little bit of a run there. Where, you know, he looked pretty good in there, but um you're you're gonna need you're gonna need some beef, some meatballs, as we like to say. Absolutely. And uh and definitely some depth there, whether he's back or not. Yeah. But no, but listen, Cody, I love the idea of developing guys yeah. and keeping them in the program. Um, it it just becomes tougher and tougher to do, especially with guys who don't play right away. Remember, you mentioned something after Arkansas got ran off its own floor against Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, who was it you were talking about? Uh, was it Jonas Adu? Yeah. Like that kind yep. of like he was Bay when he got to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, program player development got him to all SEC caliber forward. So, yeah, I'm all about developing kids. But, yeah, you know, kids nowadays want assurances and, and things like that, and they want to play. Right. So, and I just don't think, even though you don't have a roster <laughs> at the moment, yeah, like I just don't think that's, I don't think he's to the point in his development where you can give him any kind of guarantees of playing time or role or agreed or whatever, if that's what he's looking for. Yeah. Um, Hogs versus all y'all says we cleared some cap space. Wish, wish all the best to Devo. Hope he goes to UALR. Um, uh, they probably did do that, but I'm sure I, I have a feeling that maybe they were accounting for it. And the other thing with, like with Devo, it's you know it's weird how those things work. Like you can get NIL deals at you know different businesses and everything like that. And I know Devo had a ton of those because he's just such a popular figure um, in the state. And then there's also the you know like the collectives and however that distribution works, whatever. I, I I don't know how that works, but I don't know how much of that pot was going to Devo. I'm really not sure where he was at from that standpoint. Yeah. But tell me what you think about this thought. If Devo d doesn't go pro, this might make some people mad, but Memphis? Ooh, interesting. I mean, it's a relevant program. Yeah. I mean, the AAC is a good league. Same distance from home. Yeah. Interesting. Penny Hardaway. Interesting. Ooh, that would piss people off, though. Yeah, you, you really, just made a lot of people it, mad. It really yeah. would, Yeah. <laughs> Who like sign the tell tell Penny and Eric to just sign that game contract immediately? Yeah, man. But I just I think he like I I think UALR could potentially be a good fit. I just like I think Devo's track record puts him in a if he stays in school if he goes to another school I think he'll do 
no shot at Little Rock. He'll do. He'll go to a bigger school, bigger yeah. program. Um, one that I think might be a little bit more, uh, might be on a different tier, you know, n- from a national level. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, shout out to Kingsley here. Nice message. Uh, it says Debo's a hog le- legend for sure. Things haven't always gone the way he or we would like, but you're a hater if you don't recognize his impact over the last four years. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas like, would not have done the things they've done, uh, you know, under Muss without without Devo's contributions, for sure. No doubt. Yesterday I was, um, I think it was last night actually, I was watching, or actually I stopped watching the the Virginia game because um, they were putting up as many points as I was in my recliner. And I <laughs> got on Facebook and looked at my memories and the story that I wrote from Devo's uh, performance against Kansas popped up yesterday and just the just reading back through some of those quotes like Kamani Johnson's in the corner of the locker room like pounding his fist into his hand talking about how oh, Devo's a pro he's a March Madness legend an Arkansas legend if he's like if you don't think Devo's a pro you're a fool that's how I capped the ended up capping the story right um but yeah he's he's authored just so many so many memorable moments dude and um the one-on-one I got with him after the the Kansas game, uh, I guess he comes back from the the main podium, the main press conference, and he's just kind of sitting in his chair, and he's just like he's just exhausted. And mm-hmm. I'd forgotten he fouled out of that game before the game ended. Yeah, it was another one of those games where he just kind of had to sit and watch, like not not in any way similar to the Vandy game, but he fouled out before it it ended last week. Um, but he was just so happy to have authored that moment and given those. Kids like A.B. and Nick, who is really tight with. Uh, I was in the middle of interviewing Devo uh, that night, and Nick came over and just gave him a bear hug. Like there was, there was legitimate, you know, um, brotherhood between between him and, and some of those guys. And I just like I just didn't have that feel. Yeah, you know, last week at For all. Sure. But I, yeah, I would the, agree the with moment that. the moments are, and they're countless, almost. Whether it's just like individual regular season games or postseason moments that he, you know. They'll just they'll live on in the program forever, for sure. Uh, really appreciate everybody chiming in the chat. By the way, that's uh, that's good stuff. That's that's what's so beneficial about uh, when we're able to go live. Andrew McMahon says, "Who would replace Muss?" I don't think we even need to go there. Um, I, I think it would require it's going to require like a lot of dominoes to fall the wrong way for him to be elsewhere. Um, but if that were to happen, like it's just impossible to say right now because you don't know where those dominoes are going to land. Like who's going to take what job and and how things would shake out in a way where Musk would even, you know, there would even be a job that, that Musk would go to. Um, and so it would depend on who's available there. But here's what I do know um, is that despite this past year, uh, the program is just, an, it's, it's, it's viewed on a different stratosphere even now than it was prior to Musk taking the job. Uh, they would be able to get a very good coach. If if Musk were to leave now or next year or or whenever, I'm very confident in that. Uh, let's see, Zachary Davis, yeah, Brazil, Mark, and Battle, maybe, maybe a combination, like you know. I mean, I, I, in an ideal world, yeah. I mean, if they get, and I understand, like this year, it, it stunk. So there's something to be said for like turning the page and not running it back. But mm-hmm. I mean, if there were, you know, three guys that you probably like to have back, it would be them. And I know I, I'm. Confident that the staff would be open to that. Yeah. If you got all three of them, well, great. I mean, there you got something to work with there. Core. Um, but man, like if you could, if you could even nab just one of them, mm-hmm. get one of those guys back, it's just it gives you something. Good place to you start. Know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a decent place to start. And maybe that could uh, potentially alter some, you know, things that you do in the portal, guys that you target, positions that you, you know, go harder at than others. So yeah. Uh, this we'll is interesting. See. From Sean Phillips, he says, he does the handshake, but KJ Jefferson, Devo Davis, I guess, do you feel a parallel there? Like, like KJ, like for everything he did and then leaves and... I guess it just, I don't to know. me, to me, you know, KJ wasn't an in-state kid. He was just like, That's he true. was a out of, I mean, he was a Mississippi kid that came here and became synonymous with Arkansas football for, you know, three or four years, which is... I know what Devo did, but um, it just it it feels different with with Devo being an in-state guy. I think right. Um, Adam says, "Who from this year's team do you think will stay blocker and fall?" I don't think you have both of them. I'll I'll tell you that. Um, we'll see. 
I think, I mean, obviously you'd like to have some kind of continuity. Like if you could get a couple or three back, but I just, like, I, I just don't know that there's a single guy right now that I can look at and just say, oh yeah, he's back. You know, and that doesn't yeah. mean they're all gone, but my confidence level confident is not, any of them, like you know, we said last week yeah, after we watched him play mean, for the last time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Is Arkansas contacted any guys in the portal today? Yeah, one. I think there was one. But there's a, you know, there are a couple that uh, oh, even happened late, last, late night last night that we weren't night, able yeah. to talk about. Yeah. So maybe let's touch on those guys um, here real quick. I just had to pull up our list and see what we're working with here. Internet's kind of dragging in here. But yeah, the, uh, the kid that Arkansas has contacted today is Alon Sumler from Charleston Southern, 6'4, 185 pound guard. Uh, averaged 14 points, three boards, made 58 threes. Yeah. Which, without looking, I would imagine is <laughs> quite a bit more than anybody on Arkansas's roster last year. That's a fact. Um, we you, were and you hear Charleston Southern, too, and you're like, you know, okay, great. But, I mean, he had some he had some pretty nice games against some pretty good teams. So. Yeah, he did. 21 at North Carolina, 15 at uh, at South Carolina, 34 against Longwood, who is Longwood. Team. It's in the tournament. team. Yeah, Arkansas made contact today. Um, we like to add, like when we build these profiles for these kids that Arkansas contacts, we always throw a build in there. And, you know, we kind of sometimes like our creative juices aren't flowing all the time in terms yeah. of a build because we've used so many with <laughs> all these guys we've got on the board. Um, so we'll filter through sports reference and try to find a fit in terms of height, weight, you know, from previous rosters. And uh, we agreed that BJ Young was, yeah, you know, felt like a, Felt like it was adequate for this kid, for sure. That's for sure. Uh, Sky Wicks was that was one late last night. That was about eleven o'clock last night when that one came out. Yeah, um, but yeah, that one popping allowed me to to mix another drink and get after it. There you go. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was already laying in bed. I just retweeted and I was like, man, I'll do that tomorrow. I woke up, you already did it. It's like, God, Scotty's a man. Uh, yeah, from Incarnate Word, six six, one hundred ninety pound guard. Um, kind of an interesting player. I mean, thirteen point seven points per game, six and a half rebounds per game, one point eight assists. Uh, so another, you know, kind of a big wing who gets on yeah. the glass, which you like to see. Uh, I saw it reported that he's got two years left. Two Even years he, left. He's okay. been in school. Did he go I mean, JUCO? He, went, to, he and went, then, went Missouri State, and then he redshirted a year there, and then he went JUCO, and then he was at Incarnate Word last season. Yeah. So he's got, from what I read, I, I found a couple of different reports that said he had two years left. Okay. So he was a leading scorer and rebounder. Oh, 26 and 11 at, at Texas last November. So, you know. Um, any, I think any of these guys that we see that are, you know, six, 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 seven and, uh, you know, rebound or they're, they're uh, free throw merchants, as you like to say, uh, you, you kind of pay attention to them because we know that they covet those kind of guys. Um, oh yeah. Kanan Carlisle out of Stanford. Uh, he did not play in the Bahamas. I'm not sure what, what was going on there. Like, I don't know if he, if he had an injury or if he wasn't. If he joined the yeah, team late, sure. like he didn't start playing, I don't think until December. But he's he was really really good for them uh, once he joined the the roster. So he didn't play in the Bahamas, but he he had some pretty good numbers afterwards. Yeah, well, he he's did. pretty high on that on the on three's transfer yeah, on rankings. Three right? had him either one or they had him at number one last night. And then I think when they updated with the uh, Maxime Raynaud, I think he was because I saw the last graphic from on three. Mm -hmm. You know they'll put out their top ten graphics. Stanford had number one and number two, and they suck. As well doesn't make and sense. And Jared Haas it, got fired. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, And he dude. had Jared Bynum. And he had Paige's kid. Yeah. Uh, but, man, oh, wow, yeah, 28 points, 8 rebounds against uh, against Arizona. Uh, put 31 on Washington's head. So A couple yeah. tournament teams there. Yeah. Um, I, and he I just, was, like, apparently, a le or report, I almost said allegedly, reportedly he was in the mix with with Baylor and Auburn, too. So, yeah. Um, See if they get not back involved Not unfamiliar with dealing with some some schools in the South. Yeah. And I just don't I – mean, I could be wrong. I just don't necessarily see it with the Stanford kids, uh, with Arkansas, even though, like, we like we like to have the the Arkansas is coached or prepared for them, you know, angle because they do that a lot. I just – I don't know. I don't know about that one. Ray Nod is a – you know, we talked about Josh Cohen mm -hmm. yesterday. Ray Nod is like a refined Cohen. Yeah, agreed. Like he's a – He's a step up, I would yeah, say. Yeah, he got some from, more meat on his Cohen. bones. Yeah. 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 I think he's more... A little taller. Smoothly skilled mm -hmm. than um, than Cohen, who I said was comfortable being awkward. Right. <laughs> and which, speaking of Cohen, uh, no sooner than we stopped recording yesterday, 
naturally, it was reported that Arkansas had officially contacted him, which we we had a pretty good hunch that that had already happened based on some things we've been told. Um, still, Josh Cohen, UMass, um, A-10, first team, 6'10", 220-pound forward, post-up big, uh, kind of a, a unique game to him. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a little weird, but it's effective. He scored 1,600 points in his career. Uh, one to to watch closely with Arkansas. I think they're making a push there. Uh, might be down to to just a you know a couple three schools, and and Arkansas is definitely one of them. So I would I would keep an eye on that dude for sure um, here moving forward if they're looking to to make a quick splash. Did we talk about Trey Edmonds yesterday? I don't think we did. Hmm. Yeah, he's a very large man. He's six ten two fifty five, and he moves bodies around. Yeah, yeah. You've got his build as Mikel Mitchell. I yeah. think that was. Yeah, I think that's that's very fitting. Um, double doubles against Army and Lamar, full time starter for UTSA. Yeah, like it's um, numbers aren't crazy. Seven yeah. and six. Yeah, seven and six. The um, kid that took he took eight shots outside the lane this year. So you, <laughs> there you go, lane heavy, buddy. <laughs> yeah, um, I just I watched some brief film of him, and you know, just, I mean, there's not a whole lot there, but. If he hits you, you feel it. Like he's a yeah. he's a large human being. Sure. And I think there's something to be said for that, quite honestly. Um, a guy that you just throw in there and let him just lean on people and set heavy screens and box dudes out. Mm-hmm. Um, not a big shot blocker, but they'll you think twice before you challenge a guy that size. Yeah. In Imp- paint, imposing. You know? Right. Imposing around the restricted area for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, I think that's Pretty much it in terms of guys who, yeah, who Arkansas has contacted. Um, you know, there's been obviously some dudes who've, who've entered the portal that we expect them to. Uh, Chance Jenkins from Old Dominion is is one that I would expect them to be after, mm-hmm. uh, who entered the portal yesterday. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, Deshane Montgomery is a guy yesterday um, who we found out that Eric Musselman had been in contact with. And anytime you, anytime you see that Musk made that initial phone call, you're like, Oh, okay. Okay. What's going on here? Is there something to it? Um, and, and maybe there is, I think he's certainly a guy that they really like. Um, looks like he's a dude. I just, he responded to a message to me, uh, just a little bit earlier. And, uh, you know, some of the things he's looking for in a new program, um, the ability to play free and an open offense, like run the floor. Uh, so that matches up. Uh, guy who wants to be able to play through his mistakes. So I, I don't know. Sounds like he had a high turnover rate last year or something. <laughs> yeah, he did turn over a lot. He probably got yanked from some games after uh, after having some turnovers there. Yeah. But um, I remember we were watching his um, college basketball scouting video, and there were like, you know, they go they do a good job of highlighting strengths and weaknesses. Right. And the weaknesses were like the weakness was like the the turnovers. And there were like three or four clips from a game at American. Yes. Yeah. So it's like hey, you got some of that to exactly to stick through. And you know, it's you think about our, like you think about you know Chris Likes or L. Ellis or whoever like some of those guys who just seem to find their way into the doghouse at Arkansas and they don't get to play through mistakes. Um, but it's all about the impression you make and the work you put in and the trust you build with the staff because there are dudes. I mean, you think about. Devo, even KB at the end of the year earned that leash. I mean, he had games where he had five, six turnovers and they were letting him rock. Like if you build that trust and get that relationship, then yes, you can play through mistakes at Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, if you're not doing things the right way or you're not listening or whatever, um, yeah, you, you get, you'll get yanked if you <laughs> even come, if you even breathe at a mistake. So <laughs> yeah. it's just kind of part of the deal. Um, no but no, I, I thought that was a, an interesting tidbit coming back from him. So um, we will see. Let's roll through a, a few more comments, and then and Scotty will get out of here. Um, let me go back to where we were. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Uh, the higher ed guy says, what are your thoughts on the idea that Musselman hasn't been developing players? It, I, I think it depends on, like, you almost have to go, like, case by case with this because what what is developing players nowadays? Because you can't keep them for four years. Um you know, like Devo it seems like he regressed this year compared to where he was last year. But I don't think I don't think you could look at Devo last year uh with what he did in SEC play especially and say he hadn't developed. Yeah. And he took a he took a step back this season. I don't know why. Um and then you you even think about a guy like um you know Jalen Graham. Uh, Jalen Graham was an improved player this year Agreed. from last year. Uh, what we got from Makai Mitchell at the end of the season, a whole lot better than any ball we'd had from Makai Mitchell up to that point. So yeah. 
yeah, I think I think these guys develop, but there, yeah, are, are there cases where players haven't made the jumps you expected? Absolutely. Are there cases where guys who played somewhere else and transferred in skill sets didn't transfer? Absolutely. And why is that the case? I don't know. Like I, I will forever be baffled how you know Jeremiah Davenport, who did a lot of things that I really appreciate. I'm going to miss watching him play, but could be such a proven shooter at Cincinnati, and then come to Arkansas and he can't make a shot. Right. So I don't, you know, I don't know what happened there. Um, obviously they missed on L, you know, for example, it just didn't, didn't pan out the way they thought it would. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think there are some examples there where you look at it and you raise an eyebrow, but there are also, you know, probably equally as many where you look at it and say, Oh yeah, the dude really got better during his time here. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, and I think, I think part of player development is on the player. Yep. Right. That's like, who- um, we didn't hear Eric really talk this year about you remember the Breakfast Club. You know what I mean? Like a mm-hmm. few years ago, guys were getting in the gym at you know six, seven, eight o'clock. Not to say that they weren't, but we heard about that a lot. Yep. This year, I don't think we heard it like one time. Not to say that people weren't in there, but guys weren't in there. But yeah, like Devo got hot from three his junior year here because he was like living in the gym, living in the gym, right. and I mean I. I understand where people are coming from to a degree with like, you know, the coaching staff has to develop players, but the players got to want to be developed too. Yeah. I think it works both ways. For sure. I'm with you on that one. Um, let's see here. Just a, a handful more. Again, really appreciate everybody um, hopping in the chat here. Zachary Davis says, you think NIL is a problem when it comes to motivating college players now? I mean, it can be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a different, a different wrinkle than, you know, college basketball programs I've had to deal with in the past. And like the only like players have always been getting paid just in different ways. Like it's just so much more out in the open now and, you know, legalized or and unregulated at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit of a mess that they they probably need to to figure out. Jeff Sims says we need a distributor point guard for sure. I agree. Like they gotta have a table setter this year. That 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 was one thing uh, that they really struggled with was just a lack of a point guard. They had guys who could do it. But they didn't have a point guard. Is Carlisle like the only guy that they've contacted so far that we know about who could be that table setter type? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it feels Gillespie, like Gillespie, maybe. I know he scores it, but I could see. Yeah, he was over four assists a game. Yeah, yeah. that's a good call. Um, but yeah, it seems like they're in on a lot of bigs. Yeah, Kyler Milton's more of a scoring guard. More of a scoring guard. A lot of bigs, a lot of wings. Shane Montgomery, scoring guard. Brandon yeah. Brandon Johnson's not a guard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe you get just get Mikael Brown Jones to set the table. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just just get that dude in here. What are we doing? But yeah, uh, I think that's like Marcus Foster doesn't strike me as a table setter guy. I feel like he's no. a guy who needs a table set for him or right. You know, you can give it to him and put him in a ball screen. Yeah, he, and he can, can make run, a play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But as far as like getting others involved, he averaged less than two assists per game. Um, I don't even want to mention the last name that we've got on there, but yeah, just a couple of table setters that we've got on the board that they've contacted. It seems like so. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's got to be a, a big focus, right? Did but you think- it could be one of those instances where you want a really, really high level table setter and so maybe you be patient on that yeah and let the tournament play out right there's going to be some really good teams Curtis that are done playing by Saturday facts and dudes are going to be Thursday or Friday yeah definitely by Saturday yeah like this time tomorrow (laughs) yeah (laughs) so um for sure for sure good lead guard no doubt um do we what do we think about Makai's physicality? I see this right here. Like Makai was in no way physical I don't I mean I don't agree with that I think he was I think he had I think he was just lazy at times <laughs> in certain, like he just wasn't where he needed to be um, like on help side rotated, helping on drives or whatever. Um, I thought I, he was I, tough, but it could waver at times. Yeah. But that's just it was like, inconsistent. That's just, that's just big men. Yeah. For the most part, you know, and he wasn't, he wasn't as uh, physical as Mikel. I was going to say that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yep. I think what Arkansas kind of needs in, you know, in terms of a, you know, a, I don't want to call him a cornerstone, but a, a big in the front court that you feel really good about is in the same vein as a Mikel can mm-hmm. do some of the same things that he does in, you know, 6'10 or 6'11 and, you know, got some 
Got some stuff to him. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly right. Uh, okay, let's see. We Here we got Dylan Shattuck says, uh, will the media be able to talk to Eric Musselman after the transfer portal closes and everyone signs? I know sort of. <laughs> Last year, um, I went to SEC spring meetings mm-hmm. in Destin. That was May Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. It was like late May, early June, and I think I may have been the first person to talk to him on the record about the new guys. Right. So it's it's not like he's he's not going to get a guy, say, if they get one on Thursday or Friday and hold a media availability for it. Right. Yeah. Um, like a, a couple years ago, they but did. But after everyone signs, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Still, I don't know. They did a couple... Um, the year they had the foreign tour because they, they were able to practice and stuff. So we had some of that. Yeah. Um, and we were able to get in and actually see some of the practices that year. And then <clears throat> they've had in the past with uh, like maybe like a post NBA draft, like when they had four mm-hmm. guys and went to, you know, oh, we get a media availability to ask about that and you can mix some stuff in. But like this year, I don't know, like we might not even, we might not talk to the man until the first day of practice. I mean, I, I mean, I, I would think we'd get one before that, but I don't know. To, we're gonna have to go to spring meetings again. <laughs> yeah, me and you, we'll go to Destin. We'll take. Yeah, we'll, Branson, we'll, are you listening? We'll Let's take go that, to Destin. We'll, brother. we'll take that bullet. Branson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll fall on the sword for that trip. For Big sure. time question here. Okay. Do you have any eligibility left, Curtis? I think my clock is out. Like I, yeah, like it, theoretically, I still have plenty of eligibility left, but. uh I did start my clock as a freshman, and that was 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Like, it's been a minute, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think the to, people will be surprised to hear that answer. Probably so, yeah. I'll have to, uh, I might have to apply for a hardship, and we'll see. We'll see what that <laughs> There you go. It's also waiver season. It is so. waiver season, yeah. So maybe, maybe so. Oh, uh, yeah, here you go. Hunter McLaren says, DJ Burns hits the portal. Let's go. I said this on the gambling pod. That's America's large adult son for <laughs> at least one game. Did you see him flexing in that uh, at the end of that game against UNC? Yeah, that was awesome. He's, he's just so on the. He's not even man. in the game, but it's over, and he's just like, <laughs> that is a meatball. <clears throat> yes, he might yeah. be a. He might be one of those extra large meatballs that you can get from a really nice Italian <laughs> place where you get like spaghetti. <clears throat> it's spaghetti and meatball. Yeah. It's just one big meatball. That's that's DJ Burns. Exactly. He's, no, hey, God, he's so fun. That's exactly right. This is a good one to end on right here. Kingsley says, I'm loving that we're getting a pod in the portal every day. Yeah, man. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. <clears throat> We've kind of been, we were waiting and wondering like when the first opportunity would be for us to actually go live. Uh, and this was a good one. I'm glad we did it, man, because the, the comments and stuff in here are real cool. We're going to try to do that at least once or twice a week. And uh, I mean... As long as if there are things to talk about every day, we're gonna we're gonna put something out every day, uh, and and so maybe that's it for today. But but I was thinking, Scotty, we'll see. Like if something crazy happens, we'll hop on here and go live again. Like if they if they're you know upset about the uh, the Devo dipping and they get a portal splash right away, hey, we're back, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but otherwise, I was thinking maybe we put something out in the morning. Um, you know, see how the rest of the day plays out. Who they talk to. I know we got some other stuff we want to talk about, but like a pre. NCAA tournaments tipping off pod in the portal in the morning. There you go. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Could be a good time. So uh so be on the lookout for that for sure. And uh really appreciate everybody who's been yeah, tuning time. in. The the views and the listens have been pretty awesome on this. And we're having a we're having a hell of a good time covering it so far. So um if you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, Nag State Sports, make sure you do that. Uh, you can put the notifications on that way any new episodes pop up, you can uh, be notified of those. Uh, the website, I would definitely recommend. Like, it's easy to listen to, but sometimes, like, I, sometimes I'm a visual guy. Like, I need to see it. Yeah. Uh, hop on the website, man, NattyStateSports.com. We've got uh, an in-depth big board, and it's got all the guys who they've contacted, other names to watch, uh, guys who we anticipate could be entering the portal that Arkansas will be interested in, and it comes with picks and stats and highlights and shot charts and all kinds of stuff. It's a it's a pretty good resource that you can go back yeah, to and we update it daily. Late last night when I added um, Scott Wicks to the board, I threw in some player insight on the two guys that Arkansas reached out to from Texas State yesterday. Oh, nice. Okay. And I'm hoping to get some more today um, on another kid that Arkansas reached out to yesterday. So, yeah, that that player insight thing is, I, I like to do that. I've done it. I've done it in the past just for like commitment analysis type mm-hmm. stuff but i think it's it's good for people to have a beyond the numbers and the shot chart type of 
feel for a kid. For sure. You know, well, well before a kid could potentially commit. Absolutely. All right. No doubt about it. Well, are we done here? I think we're done, dude. I think we're done. Okay, good time. An hour on the dot. How about that? There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate everybody again. And uh, for Scotty Borland, it's been Curtis Wilkerson with United States Sports. And we will uh, we'll be back with you when something cool happens or tomorrow morning. Thanks again.